I've been a physician since 1988. I was a full grown surgeon since about 1995. And that's when I joined a private practice and that was in North Dallas. In 2001, I went out in my own practice. In medical school, I really loved gross anatomy. Spent two summers doing, uh, being a teacher's assistant in anatomy and got very proficient at it. And this naturally lends itself to a familiarity with the body. When we went through our surgical rotations in the junior year, I really enjoyed the rush that I got from surgery, opening things up and taking them out and putting them back, etc. I was 26, very eager to take on the surgical world and accelerate and, and prove my worth. And um, it was a, a very stimulating and academically challenging environment. It's more of a man's uh, field. I would say the bias was much more of a sexual bias than it was um, a racial bias, I feel. That was kind of challenging. The surgery training is challenging anyway. If you add these multiple layers of what I consider kind of lowered expectations and assumptions that you are anything other than the surgeon, such as the nurse or um, housekeeping, etc. Uh, it gets a little old sometimes. Uh, but overall, it was really great training. And um, I would say I, I came out of it uh, not completely unscathed, uh, but very well trained. I did a year in the lab with a professor of mine who had a particular interest in breast cancer. And uh, we would talk uh, in detail about breast cancer and uh, some of the latest articles that came out and I just developed more and more of an interest in it. I wasn't aware of it at the time, but uh, he said, you know, you really ought to consider doing some more training in breast cancer surgery. Uh, you seem to have a propensity for it. You're a female, you might, might be something that you enjoy. We do recommend that mammograms be done every year. And the reason is, is because every year there is a chance for a cancer to show itself. We do know that cancers do not develop overnight. However, there is a time interval by which you can identify these lesions by imaging early. The majority of women with breast cancer have what we call sporadic breast cancer, meaning we don't really know why it happens. There's gonna be a small segment of patients, maybe about 10% or so, who actually do have an extraordinarily high risk for breast cancer because of a genetic link that they inherited from their mother or father, and that is called the BRCA gene, BRCA1 and 2. This mutation, fortunately, is very uncommon, uh, but if it is identified, the patients have extraordinarily high risk for not only one cancer, but also a second cancer in the opposite breast. My advice to women who are newly diagnosed with breast cancer, seek help, make sure you fully inform yourself, and whatever you do, follow through with your treatment because the outcomes are magnificent and the survival rate is 95 to 100 percent for early stage breast cancer. My final point would be screening mammograms save lives. <laughs>